I remember. In my previous video, I started multivariable optimization and explain unconstrained optimization problem. In this video, I am going to discuss about Lagrange multipliers and I will be explaining how to use Lagrange multipliers to solve optimization problems. Lagrange multipliers. In the real world, it is pretty common you need to perform some sort of constraint optimization problems. The only change is the addition of several constraints on the decision variables. We still will employ the five step method. So step two is to select the modeling approach. So we can use the method of Lagrange multipliers in step two. Let me explain this. We have a function f x1 to xn. So we call this y. And here we assume that the constraints can be expressed in the form of k functional equations. We can write our constraints d1, x1, xn equals c1. Similarly, d2 up to dk, x1, xn equals ck. So these are the constraints. Constraints. Our job job is to optimize our job is to optimize the function y equal f x1 xn over the set s we can define as x1 to xn are the elements then elements should be satisfied these constraints for all i equal 1 to k then we can write down the gradient of f equal lambda 1 gradient of g1 plus gradient of g2 so on lambda k gradient of gk so this lambda 1 lambda k are the Lagrange multipliers Lagrange multipliers. Here we assume gradient of G1 and G2 up to GK are linearly independent vectors. Then let me write down the Lagrange multiplier equations. So partial derivative of F with respect to x1 equal lambda 1 partial derivative of g with respect to this x1 up to the k partial derivative of gk with respect to x1 so on xn g1 xn with respect to xn lambda k partial derivative of gk with respect to 
watch the video. These are the Lagrange multiplier equations. Lagrange multiplier equations. We must solve the n Lagrange multiplier equations together with the k constraint equations. So let me write down again here g1 x1 xn c1 up to gk x1 xn ck. So we must solve the Lagrange multiply equations together with these equations uh, k constraints for the variables for the variables for the variables x1 to xn and lambda 1 to lambda k we must also check any exceptional points at which the gradient vectors you know gradient vectors here uh, this gradient vectors are not linearly independent so let me explain an example maximize x plus 2y plus 3z over the set x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal 3 so this is a constraint of this problem so we can write down function f x y z equal x plus 2 y plus 3 z then g function here we do have only one that is x square plus y square plus z square so then get the gradient of f and g gradient of f mean partial derivative of f with respect to x partial derivative of f with respect to y and with respect to z so you can get 1 comma 2 comma 3 then partial derivative of g same thing g with respect to x g with respect to y g with respect to z so this equal 2x 2y 2z so then we can make these two equal actually at the maximum point let me write down this at the maximum point we can say these two should be equal if these two are equal then look at here and this and this are equal that mean these two must be equal therefore you know these are the vectors so this component these two should be equal and these two and these two so we can write down 2x lambda you know we have lambda over here so 2x lambda equal 1 2y lambda equal 2 2z lambda equal 3 so from this tree you can get the x values 1 over 2 lambda 
and y value 1 over lambda and z value 3 over 2 lambda. Right. Now we can use the equation x square plus y square plus z square equal 3. So that is the constraint. So now plug the x, y, z values here x, y, z values to this equation. Now we can write down 1 over 2 lambda to power 2 plus 1 over lambda to power 2 plus 3 over 2 lambda to power 2 equal 3. So solve for lambda. So lambda will be plus or minus 42 square root over 6. Consider the positive value of lambda. Then we can find x, y, z x equal 1 over 2 lambda. So just plug the numbers 1 over 2 42 and 6 divided by 6. So, so you can simplify this multiply by root 42 top and bottom and you will get root 42 divided by 14. Similarly, you have y 1 over lambda. You will have 42 divided by 7. The last one z 3 over 2 lambda. That should be 3 42 divided by 14. So we know x, y, z. Therefore, we can write the I say a, a equal 42 root divided by 14 and 42 root divided by 7, the last one 3 times 42 divided by 14. So this is the a, the point a. So then we can find the function f x1 x2 which is called y so what is the point it is a so I will find the f a if you want to uh, plug the where uh, a point a to the equation you will get 42 root that is the value then actually we have lambda negative value so 42 root and 6 it is negative so after doing the same steps what we did before you can get I say if b that point if b equal negative 42 so you can check for the minimum and maximum so you see this is a positive value so this should be the maximum value and this should be the minimum value